Hey, good morning, everybody. We are going to be doing some cool stuff this morning, but first I got to get through these. I want to spend some time talking about shading today, and shading is very important, especially if you want to up your painting game. Um, I was looking at a picture from a few years ago, popped up on my Facebook feed, and it was a yellow perch was caught by one of my friends in upstate New York. And it's a beautiful color on perch. And they're actually one of my favorite eating fish on the planet. As far as freshwater fish are concerned, they're really in the top four, I would say. Um, probably third only to walleye and crappie. I really, really love yellow perch when I can get my little paws on it. Trout is in my top four as well. But yeah, definitely, I would have to say um, walleye and crappie are one and two. For me. For me, anyways. Might be different for you. Tell me what you like to eat. Uh, I do a lot of catch and release, but I also occasionally like to have some supper. This is a crappie that I did for Cody. Um, his dad told me that he loves mint, so I reconfigured the entire crappie to be mint on the bottom. You guys can see that real well. So this is going out to them this morning. It's part of a four-piece, and I don't know if he knows or not, but when this video comes out, these will already be gone. So Cody, you got a, this is a bullnose minnow right here in a baby bull shed, and obviously the mint crappie. It's, it's cool. It's a cool color to like. I like mint chocolate chip ice cream. One of my faves. And, there, you know, I really haven't seen a mint color in airbrush out there, so I'm going to tell you real quick how I do it. I use a lot of white. White is my base when I mix. And then I mix in a little bit of tropical green and just one or two drops of opaque sky blue. Real heavy on white and then just gradually one and two drops at a time until you get that mint color. And when you get it you'll know it because it's going to look like this. A beautiful, beautiful mint green. One of my faves too, Cody, so good on you. But I want to talk to you guys about shading and specifically stenciling and shading today. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these up off camera, get them out the door, and let's get into painting something cool today. Hey, so if you're painting and you're using something like I use, like my garage, or a room in your house, do yourself a favor and invest in one of these, folks. This is like $13, $14 at Walmart, so you can get them even cheaper than that. But the two most important things that you need to know about painting, temperature-wise and humidity, is that 70 degrees or thereabouts, and around 55, this is actually a little bit low, there's not a whole lot of humidity going on in the shop this morning, but anywhere between 50 and 55 percent, that's the sweet spot right there. That is where you want to be painting. Now you're not always going to have those conditions. Sometimes it'll be a little drier, sometimes it'll be a little moister in the air, but um, most of the acrylic water-based paints that we're going to be using for spray painting and for airbrushing can handle a little bit of variation in temperature. The KBS that I use is really, really good from like 55 degrees to about 86 degrees. Doesn't like to adhere to stuff and stay there under or over those temperatures. So about 55 degrees, preferably, again, 70 is a great temperature for clear coating. So if you have a shop that you can, contem you can temperature control and you can moisture control, I run a dehumidifier in the summer, um, I run a humidifier in the winter, so this kind of serves as everything that I need it to serve as. We'll get into that. I've done a few different uh, videos on what I use in my setups and stuff. It is not a professional setup by any means. If you want to check that out, go check out Createx's latest shop room reveal, which is awesome. So, but hey, for for what I have, this is fantastic. It really is. I've just outgrown it. 
Today, we're going to be getting into shading, and I'm going to be doing some shading with stencils because I've been using stencils, and if you want to up your game as far as lure painting, a great way to do that is to use stencils. Now, there's a couple of different kinds of stencils that you can use. I frequently use Russ Allen at Insane Custom Stencils and Brian over at Anarchy Model UK, Model Stencil UK. Both of those links are always below in the description in these videos. And we're going to be working on black and white bases. And we're going to do practice paper today. I'm going to drop this onto a pattern in the second part of this video. But we're just going to start cutting a couple of scrap pieces of paper. Now the paper that I'm using for this, this is not like go to Walmart and get construction paper. This is go to Walmart and get actual paper meant for drawing because it's more pressed. When you see something that's like cold pressed paper, which is what this is, that means that it has been mashed into such a tight pulp that not as much absorption is going to happen. So you can do things like sketching, you can do things like painting on it. Um, it is not a mixed media, which would be preferable, but for our purposes today, it's going to do just fine. But it's also going to demonstrate how we can layer lighter colors on top of a dark base and really achieve some awesome results. Hey, real quick real quick as I go around the room before we get started I need to give a shout out to 1000 who is 1000 1000 is a world renowned mural graffiti artist and just all around amazing artist and I ordered so obviously as a starving artist myself I can't afford a whole lot of stuff so I ordered some stuff from him just stickers and stuff that I really enjoy his work um, and they never showed up. So I asked, I said, hey, you know, they, they didn't show. It was like two months went by. Same issues we've been having with the mail that I've been harping on, unfortunately. Because I, folks, let me tell you what, I hate harping on the mail. I, I know people that work, I have friends that work for the Postal Service. They're, they're kind of overwhelmed with budget cuts and things. So I know that not everything that happens is their fault, but some of the things that are happening now shouldn't happen regardless of whether if they're in the building and they're paid to do a job they need to do that job to the best of their ability and not just sit on mail um, but I know that they're notwithstanding I know that they're going through some stuff it's been a rough year for everybody so I get that but anyways going back to 10 hundred I ordered some stuff from him online never got there never got there never got there never got to the house so finally I'm like hey I'm really sorry to bother you guys but I never got this stuff and they said, oh, man. They said, well, give it a couple more days. If it doesn't show up, send us another email, and we'll send you out more. So a few more days went by. Actually, it was like a couple of weeks. So finally I said, you know what? I never got this stuff. I said, hey, you know what? I will pay you the difference if you just send me something with tracking um, so that the post office doesn't just throw this somewhere. So this, with tracking, showed up, and they didn't charge me extra, number one. They just sent it with tracking. Um, this showed up on time within like five days of when they sent it super happy but I was gone I was in Virginia when this came to the house um, when I got back I still had yet to open I have a ton of mail on my dining room table out that way um, I just haven't had a chance to get to yet because I've been trying to pick up and where I left off but yesterday in the mail comes the original package now take just a second to look at what the original package looks like. I'll wait. I'm sure it went through some rollers, some craziness. But I immediately fired off, and it did finally get to the house, I immediately fired off an email to these guys and said, hey, you know what, I, I got the original and I have your duplicates, which I haven't opened, so one of two things I'll be willing to do. I said, you, in good faith, you sent me a second pack um, at no additional charge. You didn't even charge me for tracking, which I offered to pay for, just because I wanted to, you know, have some of your product. Look, look, folks, look at this. This is amazing artwork. Samurai Jimi Hendrix, who does that? Um, he's originally, they're, they're from Seattle, I don't know if they're from Seattle, but they were in Seattle, so he also did an amazing life, beyond life-size mural, huge mural of Chris Cornell, which is one of, obviously, one of my favorite, loved Soundgarden, loved his voice, and um, so this guy did just 
unreal stuff and continues to and has all over the world. He has a very strong Eastern influence as well um, and a, just a little one. Uh, but I, I really appreciate him as an American mural artist, graffiti artist, painter. Um, so this is him and his wife. Big goob, just like us. Support his stuff. Um, but I said, hey, you know what? Uh, I will just shoot me your PayPal. I'm going to pay you for because that's the right thing to do. Uh, because in faith, they did beyond what they said that they were going to do. So good on you, 1000. Go to 1000 on Facebook. You can find him on YouTube. He does instructional videos. He turns a lot of stuff into multi million dollar projects. Just go check him out. Go check out 1000. That's my little plug for you, brother. So the other day, like I was saying, um, I came across a picture of a yellow perch that was caught about three years ago uh, by one of my friends in upstate New York. I can't remember which one of you boys caught it. It was either Don or Troy. Um, Don David or Troy maybe. And I got to looking at the gill plate and the cheeks on this fish and I'm like, you know, it's amazing how you can do different colors and get and achieve different colors and try and get a little bit closer to match in the hatch. So you guys can see that I have white and black paper here. I'm going to bring my GoPro down. I'm actually recording on two separate um, cameras this morning just so I can maybe get some tighter shots so it'll be easier for you guys to see. But I'm going to work in dark green that moss green, white, and like a pearlized yellow. Just some basic stuff to start out with. And we're going to start out on the light paper and then I'm going to transfer what I'm doing into the dark paper as well. So I hope you follow along. I'm going to load just a little bit of this moss green into the chamber. And just for the bases here, I've got my pressure up. And we're just going to lay down enough to where you guys can see what I'm doing. And we're going to darken it on one side and then just kind of fade it around. Just because it would be in nature, it would be a little shaded in some areas. So while that's drying, I'm going to come and do the same thing on the black. Now you're not going to be able to see it on the black as well, but that's not going to matter after a little bit. You're still going to get the tone in there. And we're just going to lay the same thing. Don't bother with that. It's fine. We can just push that off to the side. And then just kind of lighten up the area around it. And the camera's probably not going to pick up as well on the black paper as it would the white. We'll just get some basic and clean out this chamber real well. We're going to give that a chance to dry and we'll be right back in. So this has completely dried through the magic of editing and only took about two seconds. I'm going to use a larger stencil on this. If this were going on to a fish itself, uh, to a lure or a crankbait, I'd probably be using the really small dots on here. But just for the purposes of the video, I'm going to use some larger stenciling here just to show you what this can look like. And keep in mind, I'm going to keep up in the right hand corner or whichever corner we end up throwing it in. Um, that yellow perch. So into the chamber, uh, you know, I think I'm going to use a little bit thicker. I had that jacquard out. I'm going to use a Wicked, which is a little bit thicker. I'm using this one right here. And that is a detail white. Now it is not a transparent. And we're going to bring our pressure down. And I'm running pressure around 10. Now I'm going to lay this down. You can see where I have that paint there. So just in the area of the paint, I'm going to add some white 
accenting here on that stencil, lift that up. I'm going to do the same thing over here on this moss green with white background. So now you can see, and I even tried to angle the stencil to where you'd get a little bit lighter in the middle and a little bit dark around the edges because there's going to be some differences in shading on the fish itself. Fish is moving through the water. It's catching light and shadows at different rates. You want to try and portray that as best you can in your spraying. Now into the mix comes some just plain old ordinary Createx pearlized pineapple. This color. I'm showing it under both cameras just to give you an idea because I'm not sure how I'm going to edit it out. I do want to get some tighter shots while I'm spraying. But we're going to start on this yellow and I'm, I've pulled my pressure back down to about 10. Here's the trick. Instead of bringing this back in, this stencil, to try and line up where you were before, you don't need to do that. If you put light enough coats and you want to kind of test how light it is and then come back over here. If you put light enough coats, it doesn't really translate into the green. You're still going to see that green, but you will now pick up the yellow off of the white. I'm going to show that to you guys on the white. And I tell you, it looks good on a white background, but it really is going to pop off the black because black is going to absorb the yellow much better than that white will. So when you do the same thing over here, just lightly bring in that yellow on top of this white. There we go. Now you can really see the difference. Now see, it's not quite, it's a little more muted on a white background only because you're working with a lighter base color. But when you do the same thing, boy does that pop. And you really haven't lost a whole lot. You can still see that underside in there. And that is one quick way to pull off some really amazing shading with some darker background. Another thing that you can do if you're working in scales. Let's say you have, let me see if I can find it real quick for you guys. I do have some scale that I like to work with that I think I can get thin enough and straight enough to where it's going to work. But let's just say that you have a bait and you want a black base instead of a white. And this is something that's really going to make those scales pop. And we'll just do a, a small example. I'm going to pull my white back out and spray kind of like this. But I'm going to show you what I mean. You can do this with a black base on a lure. So I have loaded some white back into the chamber here. And now with the scaling, this is, this is actually from a, like a three pack of garlic bulbs. But just to kind of give you an idea, and I've obviously had this wrapped around a bait, but we're going to lay it down flat. And I'm going to come in. And just kind of give a spray here, just to get that down and then pull that off. So you can see that there is black underneath. Now, I think one thing that I want to do, because that's a good example, I'm going to do this one more time at a lower pressure, because you can see a little bit of overspray through this netting. So when you bring that, and of course it's stretched, the scales wouldn't look exactly like this. But if you get a lighter spray and lower pressure, now you have a little bit more definition 
and I'll bring that up into the camera to show you guys. So higher pressure up top, lower pressure on the bottom. You can see all the overspray in this one. I mean, it still looks good. This looks better. Good. Better. Lower pressure all the time when you're spraying mesh, netting, anything like that. But you can see how it really looks like it's a scale sitting on top of the skin. Neat trick, isn't it? Now to that, you can go ahead and shade, and we're going to. All right, checking my pressure, bringing it back down even lower. Um, I, my ideal pressure on something like this was around 20, 15 to 20. When I put in the detailing and the shading on top of this, you don't want to just blast it because you're going to lose that definition. If you're going to add shading once your scales are already off, you want to make sure that you're keeping this definition as best you can. So I have got some pearl lime loaded in. It's a lighter. We're going to be building up these layers. And you want it to be subtle, as subtle as you can. So just bring it around one side. So this actually kind of is shaped like a teardrop, although it's scale. We'll do the outside of this. And on that, we're just going to start getting a little bit darker. So I'm going to bring in some moss green. So if you were doing something like a crappie pattern, this would be ideal. Make sure I have a little bit darker. And now to the edge of this, we just build on that layer. And you just keep getting a little bit darker. Now you can still see the definition, but now you're going from light to a little bit darker to darker. And if you want to see what that's going to translate into just on itself, there you go. You can see the light going down into the dark. And that is your basic shading. Now, of course, you have to have trigger control. You have to understand where this is going to blow paint out. So that is just a little bit trickier when you're trying to define edges. But that's why you use stuff like this to practice on. A lot of people practice for baits on spoons. But if you get something that's not going to absorb all your paint, get something better than construction paper and play around with different bases. I would play around with a dark blue. I'd play around with black. Obviously, you can just get scrap paper from anywhere. This is like the, the other half of my shipping labels that I use. So just food for thought, a little exercise in stenciling and your layering, and uh, boy, that makes a big difference in your scales on a fish. That is the spray session stenciling for the day. That's going to do it for our stenciling spray session this morning. Just a little quick tip for you guys on shading and different things that you can do to play around. Now, some of you guys might already know this. Some of you guys might, this might be old hat to you. But for those of you hobbyists out there that are just goofing around and learning and trying to get better at the craft, this is a perfect exercise for you. It's something that you can do just about anywhere. If you don't have black paper, you can actually throw black down as a base coat. Just spray some opaque black on this white sheet of paper and then go from there. Thanks for hanging out with me on the channel today. I hope I've been able to teach you a couple of things. I'm going to be back tomorrow or the next day with a really cool mystery tackle box spray. We're due. I've got my box. I haven't opened it yet. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.